Remember, there's some pretty important information here in the disclaimer. You might want to give the video a quick pause and read it. Oh, hey everybody, it's me, Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Just here to remind you that if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button. And for even more amazing customs, don't forget to subscribe to Wake Angel 2001. Because between you and me, they're way past cool. My friends, this is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you with a commission for Credit Chica 4. It is Shantae. Now, the interesting thing is, I've already made a figure for Credit Chica 4, and it was also Shantae. It was even the same version of Shantae, specifically the one from Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, which I believe is the only one where she actually wore a different outfit for the length of the game. I mean, it was only a vest and a bandana, but yeah, Shantae's had a pretty consistent look for all, all the games she's been in, so this is kind of notable. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. I just woke up recently and my throat's still a little bit sore. Okay, so um, the first thing was these magic lamps. Uh, yes, uh, Credit Chica 4 wanted the magic lamp from, from uh, Pirate's Curse, which is the one that had Shantae's corrupted genie magic seal inside of it. And uh, he actually got a Sauce Dragon. Uh, you remember that Etsy guy that made the, uh, the that made Excalibur and Death Caliber and King Arthur's Crown for me. That that awesome guy who get, who made a gear for me to fix an old toy car that I had. Uh, yeah. Anyway, he made these uh, these lamps. Uh, one of them is a smaller scale, which would actually fit in an action figure's hand, so it could be held. And the other is a bigger lamp to appear like the big uh, the big lamp sprite that was used in the game because you know pirate's curse was a two, was a was a 3ds game so things had to be kind of big if in order for you to see their details uh so yes i got these two lamps i painted them gold and yeah that's the story of the lamps as for shantae herself i found a base figure that looked a lot more like the figure's art style you know way forwards cartoon anime sexy thing and it would be uh, Gogo Tamago uh, from Big Hero 6. This specifically is the Gogo Tamago figure from the uh, the Big Hero 6 animated series, which is on Disney XD, not the one from the movie line. But that's the one that I used to make Mifa a long time ago. Um, now this figure dismantles, uh, the elbows come apart, funnily enough, and the hips are mere ball joints, as is the neck, but I wouldn't be able to get those shoulders out. This is a little bit awkward because... Um, Gogo Tamago has some pretty significant shoulder armor, which, you know, just doesn't suit Shantae's look. So I had to cut all of that off, uh, being careful not to actually damage the joints underneath them, of course, and then smooth it over with some epoxy sculpt, as well as um, smoothing everything else over with epoxy sculpt so it wouldn't look like she's wearing armor anymore. Fortunately, Gogo Tamago's armor is pretty low profile. It's basically just a chest plate. Uh, speaking of chest plates, um, this is... This is kind of Disney's, uh, I noticed that there's kind of a trend in, uh, cartoons that, like, they think all they have to do is reduce a girl's cup size and that desexualizes her. Uh, um, hey, hey, cartoon makers, that's not enough to put off the Rule 34 artist, so I don't know what you're getting at. Also, it just kind of, uh, uh helps with, uh, guys that, like, other features, which you seem to be more than willing to pander to. <laughs> um, of course, I'm doing a way forward design, which uh, means quite a significant boob job. If anybody thinks that this is kind of crazy, just uh, go go to the way forward studios because this is kind of their raison d'être. <laughs> and of course, the other elements of Shantae's character design, like those little hip arch things that are on the sides of her pants, uh, her choker, and of course, the little a bikini thing that she has going on. Uh, with a pink job, we got everything going. We have the cherry red top with the gold ring holding it closed in the front. We have those extreme low rider pants, which, um, nice. And, uh, that is, uh, Shantae's torso. Uh, one thing I couldn't cover was this, uh, panel on the back, which, uh, 
I don't know. Let's just say it makes it look like an action figure with a battery pack, okay? Because I didn't... Because I didn't, cause trying to sculpt over this would just make her back look lumpy. Had, uh, you know, couldn't cover everything. That's what happens when you're making a custom figure and not a scratch-made figure. Uh, the arms are actually pretty simple. Because Shantae has these wrist bracers, which look exactly like Gogo Tamago's wrist bracers. So all I really had to do was paint paint on her skin tone and, uh, and you know, make the wrist bracers more gold instead of bright yellow. Uh, safety yellow. Um... Now, let's get into the legs. Um, now, the biggest thing about the legs would be that it's, um, it's uh, you know, just repainted and has that big sculpted flare at the bottom because, you know, genie pants. But you might notice the 3D printed feet. Uh, yes, these feet come off of an actual 3D model. And um, the 3D model, is, of course, isn't official since Shantae has always been featured either in hand-drawn or pixel art. Um, but there was, um, there was a 3D modeler on DeviantArt. Um, what was his name? I believe it was... Um... Ah, yes, it was Elisis Knight, also known as Rafa Knight. Uh, this is a significant person uh, because this 3D modeler at one point did freelance work for Archie Comics. That's right. This person is the source of the official 3D model of the Freedom Fighters, including the Princess Sally one that I used to make my um, Jazzware scaled figure of her, uh, based off of official artwork, making it the closest thing to an official Princess Sally I could get. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the same guy. Isn't it funny how these things all just seem to, to flow into each other? Like, like, before I even knew Rafa Knight's name, I was already using his models to make figures, and... And here we go, uh, making a completely unrelated character, but still, it's their models. That's just, that, that's just uh, very, very interesting. Uh, so yeah, those are the shoes off of the model. And of course, you know, I would also make the head from the model too, because that's mostly what I use 3D models for. Um, uh, now, I had Cory Sonic Fan modify it to be printer-friendly, of course. And he even cut the bangs off so that I would be able to paint the face a little bit more easily. Um... So, yes, I painted the face. Her earrings are made out of craft foam because, you know, that's just easier to do. And um, I made a very nice little Shantae head. Uh, it went onto the body pretty nicely, and these test assemblies worked out pretty good. Uh, I also made the ponytail. Uh, now, Shantae's ponytail is way too big for my 3D printer to actually do, so, of course, I, uh, I had to cut the tip off and print it as two separate pieces. I then added a little bit of an extra spike of epoxy to the end so that I would be able to embed it into the head so it would stick better. Uh, this actually, like, right here, if all I was doing was making a vanilla Shantae figure, then there you go. This is Shantae from every other game except Pirate's Curse. That's just what she looks like. So, hooray! Um, and this is where I realized something. Um, the Pirate's Curse version has a bandana, and I would not be able to make the bandana with her with her bangs already in the way. So I would have to cut off and sand the bangs away, and I didn't want to do that because, like, I put so much work into making this head look so nice and pretty, so I just went ahead and made a second print of the head. And this time I sand off the little stub of the bangs in advance, and so that I could sculpt the, uh, so that I could sculpt the bandana on around it. Uh, and I also, I painted the face, of course, because I would have to put bangs over there and then it would be hard to paint underneath. And once everything was painted and pretty, I was able to sculpt the other bangs on. Uh, now, just to differentiate it, um, Vanilla Shantae has her bangs curl off to the left side of her head. So I made these bangs curl off to the right side of her head. It kind of matches the concept art anyway. And this, um, this, this, you know, this allows me to make a, make a little bit of a difference. As you can see, now the Shant Shantae looks really good with her Pirate's Curse appearance and a ponytail attached and everything like that. Um, attaching it, now this is a thing. Um, I didn't want to discard the head I made previously, so I figured, hey, is there a way that I can rig up a swapping head gimmick with these? Uh, now, I don't have the equipment to make swappable heads that requires, like, softer, more flexible plastics. Uh, so, like... Anything that I could rig up would be jerry-rigged, and it would get damaged every time you swap the head, making the heads looser and looser until they turn into floppy little bobble heads. I don't want that. Uh, so I took Gogo Tamago's original head 
and uh, removed everything from it except for the bare essential plastic around the ball joint. Um, then I made the hole in Shantae's head big enough that it could fit over this thing. It's not a completely elegant solution, as the grip of Shantae's head on this plastic nub is sometimes stronger than the grip of the ball joint on her neck ball. Um, and when I sometimes when I take it off, the, the, the joint part comes out with it, and you got to go in there with a pair of tweezers to pull it out. But in principle, yes, you are able to swap Shantae's head around. So that's a thing. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to bring up, but um, I, I actually forgot. Uh, so let, let's go back a quick bit. Uh, first of all, you saw Shantae's wearing a vest. That's very simple. It's made out of craft foam. Um, but also, the sculpting that I did for Shantae this time, um, you know, for it was not done with my usual epoxy sculpt. It was done with another substance called Milliput. Uh, here is the Milliput right here. Um, the packet that was sent to me, like one of my fans sent me the packet, um, is simple in that uh, it's, it was a small box with a sample container, like this isn't a whole big tub of the stuff for me to use long term, uh, just to see if I, if I like using the stuff better than my original epoxy. And as you can see, there's the, the two substances are the same color. I'm used to epoxy where one is like very gray and the other is very white. But here, both of the substances are white, and they're differentiated mostly by texture. One of them feels granular, like, um, like, like uh, silty, and the other one feels very sticky and, and like more like gum, for want of a better term. Uh, so they're wrapped up in two different color plastics so you know which is which and then like it otherwise it works like epoxy you mix equal quantities of the two of them together form them around three hours later they harden uh, the thing is um, this stuff is less sticky and in principle easier to mold than the baseline epoxy so I'll give it that that's good but it leaves so much extra residue. It stained my hands so white. I had to wash them three times afterwards. So this stuff is pretty okay to work with. I'll grant it that. But it is messy. I don't think I'm going to convert to Milliput. I think I'm going to stick with Avis Epoxy Sculpt because that is less of a messy sculpting medium. So yeah, it's not bad. Um, and I might just use up the rest of what I have because it does work pretty much just as well. But boy, does this stuff have a lot of hand washing afterwards. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with Avis Epoxy. Um, now, Pirate's Curse Shantae also has a couple of accessories. Uh, notably, there is a cutlass, Risty's sword. Um, I just went to Tinkercad and found someone who made a model of a pirate sword and printed it out. I used a little bit of epoxy to hide the scars of the 3D printing. Um, or, yeah, I believe this was, uh, back to my epoxy. I used, I used the, uh, the milliput to make Shantae's body detailing, but the accessories I used epoxy on. And, um, I also printed out a nice cartoony big-barreled gun, which I did not use any sculpting on at all. It's just printed out. And I made a little holster out of craft foam, which would be, so that I would be able to slide it in and out of, uh, her, her, you know, uh, gun holster on her leg. The holster itself is connected to her leg via a toothpick, so it doesn't really come off. Um, okay, so all that done, we've talked about the sculpting media, we talked about the base toy, we talked about the modeler. Uh, so all that leaves is um, the reveal. So here is Pirate's Curse Shantae. Yep, uh, very sexy way forward design as always. And she is perfectly capable of wielding both of her weapons. She can hold that sword in her hand. Uh, she can hold the gun in her other hand. Uh, the Gogo Tamago hands are flexible enough that you can stretch them around the handles just a little bit. That's all well and good. And she can even hold the magic lamp accessory by its handle. Um, although, like, yeah, like, it, it's not a solid grip, but it can do it. And she can also put her hands up and hold the hold the big lamp lamp over the top of her head like she did in the video game to, to take her magic back from the corrupted Tinker Bats. Um, yes. Although, yeah, it is just kind of because I'm balancing it on top of her head. It's not like she's actually holding it there. But hey, you know, it works. It does what it does in the video game, right? Come on, guys. Let's, let's have fun here. So that was uh, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse Shantae. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this figure. And uh, this is Wake Angel 2001, 
signing off.